Hi, this is Thomas. Welcome to Math Class. This is Sequences Lesson 2. In Lesson 1, we learned about arithmetic and geometric sequences. So let's take an example now of one of each. But instead of being given the sequence, we're going to be given the rule. And we'll see how to use the rule to calculate any number in the sequence. So let's begin with the general term un is our general term, equals n times n plus 2 as our first example. And our second example, the general term equals 3 times 2 to the power of n. Now notice the difference in the two sequence formulas were given. The sequence formula on the left is arithmetic. The sequence formula on the right is geometric. Your clue is the placement of the variable. On the right, the variable is in the exponent, and that's our clue. That's the indication that that rule is a geometric sequence rule. So I can begin. One thing I can do is I can find perhaps the first two terms of each sequence. In this case, u1 is 1 in place of n. So 1 times 1 plus 2. 1 times 2, rather 1 times 3 equals 3. And for u2, we replace the n with 2. 2 times 2 plus 2. 2 times 4 equals 8. Those are the first two terms of the first sequence. And then moving to the second sequence, we replace n with, to begin, 1. 3 times 2 to the power of 1 is 3 times 2, which equals 6. And 3 times 2 to the power of 2 is 3 times 4, which equals 12. So we've identified, we've calculated the first two terms of each sequence based on the sequence rule. Now instead of calculating the first, the second, the third terms, I can jump to any term I want when I have the rule. So I might, for example, in my arithmetic sequence, want to know the tenth term. So I replace n with 10. This is 10 times 10 plus 2, which is 10 times 12, that value will be 120. I can do something similar with my geometric sequence. Let's find the fifth term. The fifth term is 3 times 2 to the power of 5, which is 3 times 32, or 96. So we see in both examples that if we know the sequence rule, we can calculate any term in that sequence. Now let's look at situations in which we're given a list of terms, we're given a partial sequence, and from the sequence we want to identify the rule. First let's look at examples using trial and error to identify the rule. So I'll start with a sequence of the following four numbers, 6, 11, 16, and 21. And in my second example, I'll look at the sequence of these four terms, 6, 12, 24, and 48. So I'll begin by looking at my first sequence. You might recall from video one, we have a, a difference calculation procedure we can go through. So now let's look at my arithmetic differences. 11 minus 6 is 5. 16 minus 11 is 5. And 21 minus 16 is 5. So this is a first difference arithmetic sequence. And the difference we have calculated is 5. Now the meaning of first difference is that this is a linear sequence. Second difference is quadratic sequence. 
third difference is cubic sequence. When we have a first difference, a difference at the first level of calculation, as we do here, this is a linear sequence. Now the, the core component of my sequence is going to be 5n, because I'm increasing by a factor of 5 as I go from number 1 to number 2 to number 3. Now, is this my general rule? u of n equals 5n. Well, if I test it, u of 1 would be 5 times 1, which equals 5, which isn't 6. And how different is it than 6? What am I missing? Well, to get from 5 to 6, I need a plus 1. And I'm going to find the same situation with all of the terms. If I apply the first rule of 5n to the second term, 5 times 2 is 10. But the second term of the sequence is 11. Again, I would need to add 1. Any of my terms need this adjustment of plus 1. So what this tells me is I can make an adjustment to my general rule. And my general rule is u n equals 5n plus 1. So I've tested the general rule 5n. It doesn't work. I'm, I'm not getting my sequence. The results of using the general term 5n are always too small by a value of 1. So I need to adjust my general rule to 5n plus 1. And I can now use that rule to calculate any number in my sequence. Let's look at what's happening with the second sequence. Let's look for a ratio, a constant ratio. When I calculate ratio, 12 divided by 6 is 2, 24 divided by 12 is 2, 48 divided by 24 is 2. So this is a geometric sequence. Now what is my rule? When my, my core term of my geometric sequ sequence is going to be a factor in the exponent. So in this case my difference is 2. 2 to the power of n. Now let's see if that is in fact the sequence, if that is the rule. So my general term equals 2 to the power of n. Well let's try that. Term 1, 2 to the power of 1 equals 2. Term 2, 2 to the power of 2 equals 4. And when we look up at the top, we see that those aren't terms 1 and 2. Rather, terms 1 and 2 are 6 and 12. So again, let's think about where is the gap. How do we get from 2 to 6? And how do we get from 4 to 12? And this won't be addition because we're dealing with a multiplication concept. This is going to be some kind of a multiple. 2 times what equals 6? 2 times 3. And the same with 4 to 12. The multiple is 3. And that's how we need to adjust our sequence rule. So our rule is going to be u of n, the general term, equals 3 times 2 to the power of n. So we've tested 2 to the power of n. That doesn't produce the terms we're looking for. We need to adjust by a multiple of 3. The general term is 3 times 2 to the power of n. And now we can test term 3, 24, term 4, 48. Those will both work, and we calculate any term in the series that we like now that we know the general rule. I'll end this video here, and when we return, we'll look at rules that we can apply to more advanced sequences.